like a bitch, all these bitches on my dick wanna fuck me And they did, and you know, with this shit, so you know I'm about to hit, cause we feel legit to quit uh. Lit poppy uh. Lit like a bitch, all these bitches on my dick wanna fuck me And they did, and a nigga off the lid And you know I'm about to hit, cause we feel legit to quit, 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 quit. I-T, what that spell? That's me. Got a bad bitch waiting on me with a ID. Tell me that she wanna fuck. Tell me that she wanna suck. Tell me that she wanna mm, all the above. And you know I put the glove on Jack. Kill it right. And you know I drill it right. Every time she feel a fight, you even know I fit it tight. You know I'ma hit it right. And she get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it right. Uh. And it's she eyes, sending peace to us Go so hard together, girl, we go so hard together Nothing lasts forever, so let's be nothing forever Baby, you the hottest, so I'm the coldest, fuck the weather Ay, Dead like a bitch, all these bitches on my dick Wanna fuck me, and they dead, and you know I'm with this shit So you know I'm about to hit, cause I'm too legit to quit uh. Dead like a bitch, all these bitches on my dick Wanna fuck me and they did, and you know I'm with this shit So you know I'm about to hit Cause I'm too legit to quit uh. Cause I'm too legit to quit uh. Uh. How to think, Kelly, that's just something you should know You might see me on your TV, hear me on your radio Ayy, so hard on world, that's your girl to call me show When I pull up skirt, skirt, all these bitches wanna roll Got a nigga from Chicago, say I'm colder than the go. I've been drinking all these drinks and I've been rolling all the stroke. Got a bitch from Alaska, say I'm colder than the soap. While I go with the bro, know that everywhere I go. Dead like a bitch, all these bitches on my dick wanna fuck me, and they dead, and you know I'm with this shit, so you know I'm about to hit, cause I'm too legit to quit. Uh. Dead like a bitch, all these bitches on my dick wanna fuck me, and they dead, and you know I'm with this shit, so you what is going on uh happy friday happy happy veterans day to any other uh veterans out there i took the day off today and had like a lot of stuff i was going to do and then i ended up doing none of it and now i'm doing a lauren stream so um y'all having a good day so who who's here i got a doctor dr cunt i'm i'm pretty sure that is not a real doctor the professor with some with some important news about Queen of Spade being crazy, eighty-seven problems here to party. Chupa grandson, Duchess Cyber Squeak, who is also a Green Frog, I believe. Um, some jealous basement dweller, Little Evil McNuggets, Mandy J, uh, Blue Blue Boy, and Sloth Cat. Sloth Cat is here. Um, sloth cat, nothing, nothing better than that. O o Omega E Bear, Bees Knees, Cat Jeezy, Logan W, and and Salty Robot. So we're gonna guys, we're gonna pick up where we left off last night. Uh, we were we're going through the Blue Boy calls in chronological order, not the order they were, they were released, but chronological order. What's going on, Trisha Paficia? So um. I mean, if if you if you've heard any of the Casey stuff, you know that that she is just tearing into Lorne, call after call after call. So we're we're gonna pick up there, and uh, I I got four calls that I want to do. Uh, I think it's twelve, eight, nine, and ten is what I want to go through today, and maybe maybe an extra one. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. I just realized I'm not sharing um I'm not sharing my screen so you guys aren't hearing anything. So let me um let me fix that. Oh, 
Oh, Dr. Cunt is a real doctor. That is, that's my bad, Dr. Cunt. Uh, what kind of, what's your area of, what's your area of specialty? Have you heard about Dr. Butte? That, like, seriously, there's a, a, a doctor named Dr. Butte in, like, Minnesota or something. But she got, she got busted. She was a doctor who would do, um, like, those butt injections and, and just different stuff, mommy makeovers. But she was, a uh, she was dancing on TikTok and shit, like, dancing with fat they pulled out of people and, like, excess skin they cut off. She was dancing around on TikTok. She got she got busted. It's pretty crazy. Doctor Butte you should look it up. All right, so I'm gonna start back over now that uh, now that we're actually sharing. What the fuck is Paula? She was she was a potential girlfriend that wasn't really a girlfriend that working on being girl boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> then she wound up hooking up with some other guy that she was didn't even really want she just used to to have sex with him oh. i mean i know we're 30 seconds in but it's already it's already so loaded so he's, he's he if you remember at the end of the last call he said i know what love is because like right like i've loved someone for 25 years and and it's and it's Paula. And when asked who Paula is, well, she was someone who we weren't together. Like just like just like Casey, just like just like Debbie. It's someone that we weren't together, but we were interested in talking about about being together. And and then she she but they didn't end up together. And and it's what he says that she was with someone she didn't even want to be with, but she just used him. And then there's like a little silence for sex. So like she couldn't even use Lauren for sex. So they were in, so like I mean that has to hurt, that has to hurt his feelings. But as a fifty year old, fifty two year old version or whatever, that would that would hurt. It was my fault because I her and I spent a lot of time together, like every minute that we could. So you've been in love with a woman for twenty five years who was never your girlfriend. Why do you love her for twenty five years? I assume she's moved on and probably has an entirely different life now. Oh, yeah, she does. What did you love about her? You said you know what love is. What about her did you love? That she was never even your girlfriend. I love the attention that we gave each other. Man. You love the attention. You love getting attention. I love the attention that we gave each other. <laughs> the time that we spent together. I love oh, that she was, I love that she was good to my nieces and nephews and to my brother and to my sister-in-law. I love that she there fit right in. Go. You got it. Finally, you love attention. You love any attention you can get, whether it's negative or positive. I love the attention that she gave to me, and I love the attention I gave to her. You love all attention. We both gave each other a lot of positive attention. Right so up. how long did you know before? I knew her at the time. I knew her. What's going on, uh, Rocket Fuel Foreskin and Guru? You guys are just in time to hear about how uh, how Lord knows what love is because he's been in love with someone for twenty five fucking years. For six months. You knew a woman for six months and were in love with her for twenty five fucking years. Yeah, well, that's happen. Happen. Yep, should happen. Happen. I didn't stop my life. I didn't stop my life. I didn't Half of your life. years being on this earth, you hey, were in hey. love with a woman. Didn't give Casey. a single fuck about you. Casey, I didn't start my life, but I was still in love with her. That shows me that you don't know what being in love means. Of course. There's always something wrong with me. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's be picky. Let's be Pick picky. Apart. <laughs> let's be picky. You're saying you loved someone for 25 years. You knew for six months. I'm trying to help you. It's not being picky, it's just a fact. You know, we, you, you know how many people uh, have have done the same thing, though? They what, try to try pick to my brain to, apart. They're trying to, trying you know, to get you to understand? Trying to get me to say things. You want to ask me these questions? Ask me when you're in person. You wouldn't listen in person either. In person, I pay more attention to. I mean, if Casey was a real person, if Casey was a real female, 
at the very moment she heard that Lorne, 25 years later, still considers himself, quote unquote, in love with a woman that he was around for six months that they never dated, she would run for the fucking hills because that's that is a that is a future stalker that is that is obsessive that's not love that i mean if you if you went to the police like you tell someone that and they're gonna think that something is very very wrong with you because something would be very very wrong with you you're saying i'm still in love with this person from 25 years ago who i spent six months with not in a relationship that's crazy so yeah over the phone all i'm thinking about is how many other people have, have done the same shit over the phone I'm trying to figure out how you can say you love me when you oh. don't know what love is and you were infatuated with a girl from 25 years ago who right, doesn't well. get a space now. You probably <laughs> forgot who you were. I'm not talking about you her. Probably oh. no, you I probably don't. never thinks about you. Oh, no, I know what she does. Like, you can't probably never thinks about you. You brought her up, Lauren. Okay, what part of I'm not talking about this over the phone? You brought her up. Yep, I brought her up. But I also cut it off, but you wanted to keep going with it. That was your example of loving someone, or be, knowing what being in love is. Because you being in love with someone who had no feelings for you back. I'm not talking about this. That is some creepy shit. Very creepy. Yeah, well, shit happens. Six months of attention equals 25 years of obsession. What's up here to party in Cali Slime Bucket Witch Lady? You should talk to your therapist about it. I already did. No. Did she call you pathetic? Nope. Did she mention obsession? Nope. Then she sucks. You should get a new therapist. No. The one I get now is, is fine. Yeah, it's good to have one who just agrees with everything you say. She doesn't agree with but everything I say. <laughs> Told her I didn't really want to stop talking to, stop talking to you. She pointed out the things Are you in love with her? Are you in love with her? I didn't, All right, well, I'm not going to do this all night. You got to tell me now what you want to do. Well, first of all, do you want me? I told you before. How many times has this man asked someone, do you want me? Either in a comparison with someone else or just outright, do you want? If you have to ask that, if you have to yell at that in an angry voice constantly, like, no, they, they, you shouldn't have to ask. You'll, you'll know. If you're wanted or, or if you're not in most scenarios, you'll know if you're wanted at work, if they like you, if, if, if they like the job you're doing, you'll know if they think you're a piece of shit and you should, you know, be looking somewhere else. Like, you'll just know. You don't need to ask if Casey, Casey clearly does not want you at all. I could tell you're a therapist. I know. Casey is an amazing therapist, though. Just mean. So fucking mean. But if you're going to get free therapy, it's probably not going to be. It's, they're probably not going to be nice to you. They're just going to be. They're just going to be mean to you. Lauren, I have to meet you and get to know you first. Because unlike you, I don't fall in love with everyone right away. I need really? to get to know them, and I don't you even know Jamie. you. You did, Jamie. What? <laughs> you fell in love with Jamie right away. Holy shit! That was before you went to Nashville. Oh my god! As a matter of fact, you were engaged to her before you even went to Nashville. Got married in Nashville. Yeah, but gotten married in Nashville, you already knew what was going on. And the difference with that is Jamie and I were always super nice to each other and got to know each other, or at least she got to know me. <laughs> I got to know me. And this, and this is just more of Lauren's like tit for tat thinking. If if you could if you could fall in love with someone else over the phone and agree to be, you know, to get engaged, then why not him? If if you could fly to Vegas to support your friend's band, why couldn't you try your ass to Maine to support him at his, you know, RSO hearing? You know, whatever the case may be, if, if you're willing to do blank 
for someone else, then you have to be willing to do it for him. And it doesn't matter that relationships are like partnerships and that, you know, there are some people who you would absolutely help move if they asked you. And there are other people who you wouldn't fucking lift a finger for because you know, they wouldn't do it for you. And and normally that's how things work. Right. And, but with, with Lauren, if you're willing, it doesn't matter what the relationship is you have with this person, what this person has done for you. it, It just does not matter. If you're willing to do it for someone else, you have to be doing it for otherwise that's not fair. And I can only imagine how many times Lauren yelled to his mom that's not fair and she said you know what lord life's not fair that is my car you know and um what's going on the professor and, and one of those weirdos dj pain uh il Rierg, fbi la senorita chupa grandson i think you you were here already so home slice slices person two weeks no, it wasn't even two weeks. after three weeks. It wasn't two weeks. Two weeks. You said you love, you love, you love my. I love you to each other. Then what was it? A couple of days later, she asked you to marry her. You said yes. That was long before you went to Nashville. You fell in love with her too, and she was never nice to you. You don't even know what you. You don't know anything about her. Nope. Nope, I don't. Not like I thought I did. We spent our spent time together, played games together. He got to know me. He knew more about me than you do right now. Well, yeah. Because they're a good catfish. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you want to do now, Lauren? Well, we're going to have to figure out some way to, to let probation know that you're real. This is not a catfish. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. You give probation my phone number or my email address or any way they want to get in contact with me. They can ask me whatever questions they want, ask me whatever pictures they want, videos they want, whatever they want. I want to hear it from her fucking mouth. She needs to tell me what she wants from me to prove I'm real. And until then... You can go ahead and not text me and not call me if that makes you feel better, okay? All right. Yeah, voice to voice. I was just thinking the same thing. I've never heard someone so self-aware and also lack all complete self-awareness because, like, right now, he's at a point where he, he knows a lot of what has happened in the past has been catfishing. He knows that he trusted people who told him things to make him trust them. And they ended up recording him and making a fool of him. Yet again, he is talking to someone else who in the past has catfished him while complaining to her about not being able to trust other people while having his phone calls recorded. And and it's just like, we, we just, we're, we're at the point now. We just see where if you have a female voice or not, fuck, it could be a robot. If you were going to pay attention to Lauren and you could sell the fantasy that there is a female on the other end, the likelihood is, is really high that, that, well, I mean, he's, you know, but he will, he will talk or at least be interested. All right. Some fucking mess. I'm sorry. I haven't showed you that picture of Jamie. I'm sorry. Any, anything about everything about Jamie. Yeah. I'm sorry about that too. I wish you never introduced her to me. I wish the same. I never met her or anything. But you have a special connection with her for some fucking reason that you can't describe. Well, I don't have it, obviously. It's all catfish. You can't have a special connection with a catfish. Certainly thought you did. He has had special connections with, with every catfish going back to to catch a predator and, and even the ones before that that he's admitted to. He has a special connection to everyone that he believes has a, a vagina who pays him even a modicum of attention. They have a very special connection. Spend more than an hour talking to voluntarily contact Lorne via text or email or, or let him know that you're thinking about him. And that will build a special connection. As long as you know, like he has to think you're attractive. Just paint the picture in his head. Big boobs, skinny waist, blonde hair. And he'll be like, yeah, I love you. 
you're my baby. I bought you a I bought you a dinner ring. Well, because at the time I didn't know it was being catfished. You know that feeling. Remember when we first started talking and I caught you sending those text messages that said that her pussy will always be yours. <laughs> this is all your fault. Leave <laughs> it alone. Oh shit. And she didn't even have a pussy with Will's dick. Oh. Oh, Will's a big pussy then, isn't he? Well, you wanted to suck his dick. No, I don't want to. Casey. Now you know that's not true. I'll suck his dick. You were in love with him, so whatever. <laughs> you and I both fell in love with Will. No, oh, we we both fell in love what we with what we thought was a female. That turned out to be a man. That wasn't our fault, Casey. That was not our fault. We didn't do anything wrong with that. A being female is the only thing. Oh, yeah. That you loved about her. <laughs> a, being, a being female was the only thing you loved. You said because if there's anything about her personality, it was all well. Fell in love with Will. Okay, but can we agree that Hillborn has a very sexy personality? He's Canadian. They're all sexy. Have you seen Queen of... Oh, well, hold on. You guys want to see sexy Canadian. Just look at this. I heard she mad rich. I heard she dead broke. I heard she sniffing coke. Shut up, bitch! Hey. Okay, now picture that, but with but with Hillborn's face. Will, for spending time with you. Certainly knows how to act like a female. Really? Because you use a British male robot boy. I <laughs> don't know how that makes him act like a female. But okay. So they lied to me. They lied to me about a voice. Yeah. How the hell did I know what COVID could do? Not about and then again, Casey rebuffing because right before Lauren was trying to make it their issue. That we're, look, we're not to blame for this. They got us. This is a, a shared thing that he really wants to to impart this you and I against the world. Like, they're going to be out to get us. Uh, the church of, of they're going to be looking for us. They're going to want to put you on blast. And and Casey just doesn't care each time she does not give a shit. And when he was just trying to say, this was not our fault, she goes back to like, well, you wanted to suck Will's dick. Boys, I'm pointing the fact out that she didn't act any different. Yeah, she didn't. It was a man talking with a man's voice. There's nothing feminine about her. And how could I know that? Well, I knew about the robot voice. I, I know you because didn't know it. I'm saying you fell in love. I couldn't understand love. the female voice. What I I'm asked, saying is... I asked her to change voices. Unfortunately, yeah, she picked asked the, the male it. voice that I could understand better than they could the female voice. Okay, and that's about the voice. What I'm saying is you fell in love with Will for spending time with you. That is what you said earlier. I fell in love with, with what I thought was a female. Right. With what I thought was Jamie. Yep, I know. But you, you said it was about spending time with you. Yeah, well, I didn't fall in love with Will. Well, but you did. You Will certainly was did. He's a female, so yeah. he was given a completely different personality. So... So is is Lauren basically saying that in order to have a female personality, you need to be able to make him jealous and enraged? Because I, like I think anyone could get him enraged, but it's just the jealousy thing. So cre creating creating a male a male competition and scenarios where where there is a male that is around who wants to be with this person, or who makes it clear, or who or who even just is around this person. That's enough. Oh my God! You you know exactly how to be like a be like a female. You you got me jealous, just like a woman. And it's time with Will and fell in love with him. I did not fall in love with Will. Will you stop getting trying to get me to say that? You'll have to say it as long as you know it. Huh? And we I don't know it. I don't. No. I know now that it was Will portraying a female. And you won't I did not Alrighty then. 
Okay. So I guess um, I'll hear from you when you tell probation what they want, right? Is that what we're going to wait for? I don't want to stop talking to you. I know, but we have to, right? Because my number's paid, and because probation thinks I'm paid. And the solution to that is letting probation know I'm real. And that was what you said earlier, that we can't talk because you can't verify I'm real. So what I'm saying is, you give probation my information. They can get in contact with me however they'd like. Whatever they want that from me to prove I'm real, I will give it to them. And I guess until then, we'll just do whatever you want to do. Sound good? Okay. All right. So I'll hear from you once I hear from them. No, you hear from me before then, probably. All right. Well, if I do, don't ask me for my phone number and don't ask me um, about anything you're suspicious of because if you're suspicious, you tell your probation, they can come to me with concerns. I'll give them directly whatever will prove to you that I'm not fake, okay? All right. Don't expect, me right. to, don't expect me not to, to tell you when something bothers me. Well, this is what I'm saying. If, if you have an inkling... Casey doesn't give a shit. Just like in the Sting House, when Casey didn't give a shit, Casey still does not give a shit. You know all that I'm doing something fishy or you think I'm fake. Go to them. They can come to me. I don't want to hear it, okay? You you don't want me to be honest with you about the way I feel. About I them. don't want you to excuse me of being fake, yeah. Okay. If I, I have like... to get where you're accusing me of being fake or you have questions and you think I'm fake, your options are don't talk to me ever again or have them reach out to me with your concerns, okay? Because I don't want to hear the same shit every day. Okay, but if something, if you do something that makes me uncomfortable, you're going to want me to be honest with you about it, right? No, she doesn't. Not 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 <laughs> Casey doesn't give a shit, Lord. No one cares what makes you uncomfortable. Casey doesn't care. Casey is saying if something makes you uncomfortable and it bothers you, you can either deal with it or you can fuck off. That that's all that that is what Casey that is what Casey is saying. Here's the thing: if the thing that's making you uncomfortable is giving you the suspicion that I'm fake, then no, I don't want you to come to me with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I want you to tell me information. Okay. Okay. So what if I come right down the street and ask you why would you say that or something like that? Is it are you accusing me of being fake when you say that? I would be accusing you of using something from the internet to make me feel bad or to to make me react in a certain way. There are way too many variables in there. In there. I think even Lauren got lost on his way to that one. That makes you think I'm a catfish and fake? No, because honestly, I don't think you're fake. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you can. Great. Well, you can come to me with that. But if you have any doubt that I'm real, then just don't talk to me or have probation reach out to me with your concerns. And that way we can get it all squashed and we don't have to have any concerns at all that I'm fake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. But I'm going to give you an example of something. He can't tell if this is if this is cute or not. Like if this is if this is like play talk, but it's it's making him very nervous and and frustrated. That gargoyle, All right, that gargoyle okay. crap that you that you said the other day, yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's all the same shit that 
Jamie and Will said. Okay, so so two people can't come to the same conclusion that you have a disgusting feet. Is that what you're saying? Two people come to the conclusion, <laughs> but what I was saying, telling you, is uh, it was almost word for word what you said and what they said. Okay, so what that says to me is that two separate people came to the conclusion that you have gargoyle feet. So maybe instead of accusing me of being fake, you should look at your feet and decide how to take care of them better so that no one ever says they're gargoyle feet ever again, okay? Lauren, if no one ever said you had gargoyle feet before, and then two people who you believe to be catfish said you had gargoyle feet, they're connected, Lauren. They're connected, and you should stop talking to those people. You shouldn't entertain it any further. Just just cut it off. Uh, Casey, listen, I'm, you don't need to talk to me like I'm a kid. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I've looked at my feet before. <laughs> I try to take care of my feet the best that I can. You see pictures of, of my feet then. It's a little <laughs> more difficult for me to take care of my feet as good as I can now. They're looking okay. better. But something, there's some things that I can't help them that because it's hereditary. That's my great to hear. Okay. Mother has has issues with her feet. All right, so you're a whole family of gargoyle feet. Oh, I didn't see my whole family. Okay? I didn't see my whole family. Whatever. Then you and your mom have gargoyle feet. Right. Well, I, point being, I think point being is nobody should be making fun of uh, what anybody looks like. Period. There's nobody in this world that is perfect. Nobody's perfect. That's correct. But no one besides you has gargoyle feet, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. And you told Jamie that I was ugly without makeup. So you did that before. You lying piece of shit bitch, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know. Did you say you lying piece of shit bitch, okay? Um, so both, both Joran and Lauren. We're not a fan of of Casey without makeup. Mark that down. Another another similarity between Lauren and Jorn. Not ugly. I know I'm not ugly. I'm not I'm sensitive not about ugly. it. But when you two called ugly or gargoyle feet, you know it's true, so you get defensive. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, so, no, I was I was more defensive because of it being the same things that Will and Jamie had said. Okay, well, that's because Jamie and I got to the same conclusion that you have disgusting feet doesn't mean that I'm a catfish recording you, okay? Okay. Okay, so what's the new rule, Lauren? The new rule is don't call you fake. And if you think I'm fake, what are you supposed to do? Yo, if you're in a relationship and someone is talking to you like this and it's not voluntarily, like that's not your dynamic, you you are not in a relationship. This this person, this you are a, a dependent. That's the relationship you have. Like, the, Lauren is being talked to, not even like he's a child, he's being talked to like he's the dumb kid in class. Everyone else is. Everyone else can subtract. Lauren, you're the only one I have to stop for to remind that two minus one is one. Okay, Lauren, do you think maybe tonight instead of watching Thundercats, you can open up your math book? Okay, like it's so fucking content, and he'll just and he'll just keep taking it. He he'll just keep taking it. But if if he had to have all of his, if all of Lauren's phone calls had to be in front of other people with speakerphone. He would not be with any of these people if his phone calls had to be monitored by by a member of his family, or if they were all forwarded to. He would not be in these types of relationships because this shit is embarrassing. Like he has zero pride. You can't have any pride in yourself unless you are voluntarily in a dynamic like this. You can't have any pride for yourself and just let someone talk to you like this. Be like, yeah, but I love you, girl. Let's get married. Fuck is wrong with you? Tell probation my concerns. Or, or stop talking to you. There you go. Why do you feel All like right. you can talk to me like a kid? Because this is the only way I can get you to understand, little buddy. <laughs> oh, little buddy. 
Come on, come on, champ. Well, because I just talked to you for like two hours, son, and you didn't listen to a goddamn thing I said. Well, so when I talked to said, you seem to absorb yeah, the information. To, Casey, you say I don't listen to, listen to a thing you said, and I listen to what you say, but you, you don't listen to what I say. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Oh my God. Huh? Is there anything else? Any other concerns you might have? Not right now. You can stop talking to me like I'm a kid. Okay. Now, right. you have a good night, right? All right, you too. All right. Sleep tight, okay? Right. Bye. You too. Bye. I just fucking know that Alex was sitting there the whole time laughing at Lauren and that's why she was that's why she was acting like just putting on a fucking show for Alex and if you need a reminder of what that smug bastard looks like this is him this is the this is the guy in my mind that is spending all of his fucking time with Casey while Lauren is is sitting probably perched from the ceiling like the gargoyle he is uh angry Angry because Casey is not calling him. Casey is not giving him his, his attention. He wants attention. Um, and he's wanted her for a long time. Anyway, so now we're going to move on to the next call in order, which is which is chapter eight. Blue Boy, do do we ever hear about the the thruple or more about? Do we hear more about that at some point, or or has that happened? Have I missed it? Hello? Hello? Hi. Can you turn the TV down? I am doing that right now. Can you hear me better now? I hear the TV. It's like blaring. Yeah, hold on. It's one in the bedroom. You have both TVs on? Yeah. I was in both rooms. But you weren't watching anything? You just did sound? I was walking on the treadmill for half hour and I watched TV and now then I came back out here and Sadie ate her supper late because she wouldn't eat it earlier and then I went in and took a shower and, and I mean I already regret Casey asking him a question because he just everything he says sounds so fucking boring and he he doesn't he doesn't even go into great detail but just everything he said it sounded like even he's bored saying it like if if that if that was your day, just say I didn't do shit because everything you're describing sounds fucking horrible. It sounds horrible. Your life sounds very sad and empty. And I know it is, but just say I didn't do shit. You know I didn't do shit, girl. Prove I did shit. And then I just sat down here and put some crap on my toenails. Put some crap on your toenails? Yeah. What does not that mean? Not literally crap. Well, I know that. Some stuff to my, help my toenails get back to normal. What, is, what do you mean? Some, some. Hold on a second. I'll tell you what it is. Proclears. Fungal What's shield. What's wrong with your? The only active ingredient clinically proven to cure and prevent fungal infections. Your toenails are infected? Yeah, well, no, it, it clears the fungus I have on my feet that's made them gone yellow. On my on my toes, on my big toenail. So they're infected. Well, whatever it is, it's fungal infection, whatever you want to call it. I, I just don't understand. Why would Casey want to spend time with Alex when Casey could be on the phone Talking about yellow toe fungus with her, with her sex predator boyfriend uh, in another state. Like, why? Why would the young, fit, attractive Casey want to do that? The fuck is wrong with her? They don't look like they're supposed to. So I'm trying to get them back to look so they like, like they're supposed. They're to yellow. <laughs> yeah, they, they tear yeah. easy. They're yellow and they tear easy. Ugh. Yeah, what the fuck is what is what is wrong with it? They are yellow and they tear easy. 
<gasps> does someone is he is he not drinking milk? Does Lauren does Lauren need more calcium? What is going on that he's got? Does he have scurvy? Can I let me know in the chat if Lauren has scurvy? Well, just the top of him. <laughs> just the top of him is yellow and it, and it tears easy on on the one side, on one corner. Wow! So, so I'm fixing up. Is it working? Know. I don't know. This is the first time I've used it. You got turf I mean, toe. Literally the first time I've used it today, tonight. I just just bought it yesterday. I'm looking for stuff for it. You know, Lauren went to the vet and they gave him some fungicide and they gave him a cone for his neck so that he doesn't try and bite this shit off. Because there's, there's, uh, th this sound, this sounds, this doesn't sound like something humans get. I think he's got like ick or whatever that shit is that fish get. I think he's got that. That's not, you're not supposed to get that as a person. So I found that. So I was like, cool. Give that a whirl. So you are, you done work already? Mm -hmm. No, bitch, let's get back to your toe. Hey, you get done early today, huh? Yeah. How's it going? What's good. up, crispy tree? How's it going with you? It's going good. I mean, how's it going with work? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Here's All the way absurd. You really think Lauren has trench foot? Lauren, Lauren has the feet of a of a World War One trench soldier. That's disgusting. Sometimes, I mean, you don't have fun. Sometimes. Um, no, not all the time. No. I figured you'd have fun doing just about anything. Yep. So, I have a question for you. Okay. Why do you not like answering the questions that I ask you? I do answer your this man asked a question about questions. I have a question for you. Why don't you like answering questions? How do you even, why even start with the, I have a question for you, but you're about to ask a question about another. That is questionception. That's dumb. The fuck is wrong with you? Your questions. No, you don't either. Not most of the time you don't. Most of the time you ask me a question, I answer it, and I ask you a question and you don't answer it. You avoid answering it. Why is that? Mm, I don't think I do that. I think I always answer the question. The only time I don't answer a question is when I'm asking a question and... You got heavy... Yeah. I got a question. Can I get a ride home? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cyber Squeak. You don't answer me. You just park. You try to turn the tables around on me and avoid answering my question, and that's when I don't answer questions. It's because okay. you're trying to change the topic. That's when I don't answer them. Okay, but if you look back in our text, you'll see was last week sometime, I had, I had asked you a question, and you didn't answer it, but oh you my God. asked me a question, and it wanted me to answer the question first before you answered my question. Oh. Lauren, you are in a non-equitable relationship. You are in a in a relationship that is not a relationship. You are in a quasi-friendship with someone who gives you what they want and, and expects whatever they ask from you. If you were to go to a relationship counselor, they would tell you that this was a this was a bad, this is a toxic relationship. Um, you, you are, you are ex willing to accept abuse from this person. You were, you ask why, why people keep making you fall in love and, and it's because you will put up with anything just for the attention. And so everyone knows that. And since everyone you deal with is a catfish, you're basically just in one toxic relationship after another, because they're all just getting something from you, which, which is this great content. So like, that's why they don't answer your questions. Cause it's. It's hard when you have to remember a lot of things. <laughs> when you're trolling someone, you have to remember a lot of things. It gets really difficult. So it's way easier when you get asked a question to just turn it around on you. Prove that's my dick. 
Thanks. Lauren. You see. Thanks, Lauren. Remember when I kept asking you why you were avoiding my question? No. What was your question? I don't remember. I don't remember now. You answered it at the end of the night. You answered it at the end of our. Oh my God. Oh, so I did answer the question. Okay. Yeah, but you made me answer your questions before you ever answered mine. I had to keep asking you over and over and told you I weren't going to give up asking the question. I don't remember. Well, what then maybe next time you should just answer. Crispy Treat, he's gone back to jail for violating his probation. He's he's well aware that he's violating probation, but you need to understand one thing. Love knows no bounds, and the heart wants what the heart wants, and also she had him at hello. So do those things mean nothing to you? Because they mean everything to this man. For my question, and then we can move on to your question. Yeah, but I asked you the question first. And then you ask, are we well? What does that matter? Oh my god! Oh, well, okay, so if it doesn't matter, then why would it matter to you? Exactly. What? And if you ask me, if you ask me a question first, and then I ask you a question after, without answering your question, why because would it it's matter? different because you're trying to avoid answering the question. Wait a minute. How is it different if you're doing the same thing? Because I'm not avoiding answering your question, I will answer your question after you answer mine. You use it to avoid answering questions. But I asked you a question first, and you wouldn't answer it until I answered your question. What was your question? And even um, Mid Dookie Munkler, I think that's a bully name. Casey Morrow had Lauren's heart at the edge of a chair. That's like a that's like a bully comment because I think you're making fun of Lauren. Um, you're making fun of Lauren because of what Casey said. I'm pretty sure that's a so let's put a in the in the bully bowl for the next pizza stream. After I answered your question, you still didn't answer my question till way, way later. Who gives a shit? Okay. <laughs> so I'm wondering why you do that. Why I did it that one time. Uh, no, you've done it. You've done it more than once. You avoid my questions. You don't. You you go through the read through our text, and you you see you don't answer my questions. I ask you a question, you don't answer them. Yeah, well, I just told you why I don't answer your questions. I mean, this is a thirteen minute call where where Lauren is asking a question about asking questions regarding a question that was answered. That's what this call is about. His suspicions about why you don't want to answer questions. And my example is a week ago, I, you, I asked you a question, but then you asked me a question. You wouldn't answer my question, so I answered your question. And then later you answered that question. And that's what the, he, so he's been sitting on this. He's been sitting on this shit for a week, waiting for the right time to bring it up. And right now he feels like it's time to, to cash in his ticket. And he's going to bring up his, that it makes him upset about what happened a fucking week ago. You push over bitch. And I don't answer them when you avoid answering mine. Because you don't you don't have questions until I ask you a question. If I ask you something, you 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 try to deflect by getting defensive and asking your own questions. Hey, well the, that's something that we need to talk about too. Because the reason that, that I get defensive is because it's a it's a habit with me right now because of all the crap the catfishing crap that I've been through. That's that's why you 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 get defensive because you have a very low self worth and, and self esteem and you've always had a low self esteem but your your self worth was decent until the sting and so now you know that forever you'll be marked as an RSO and even if you weren't you'll be remembered as as the guy who tried to try to fuck children and and then even worse there is a, a community and people listen to your phone call like your self-worth is zero so that's why you're defensive because you don't believe like you you want to believe that people want to talk to you but in your heart you have to know that everyone who's talking to you who spends any amount of time talking to you is probably doing it for a reason and eventually you'll find out about it so you always have to be on the defensive because you know at some point you're going to find out that Casey wasn't really Casey again. I get defensive on, on things. Yeah, you said that before. 
Okay, well, so you should understand it because you were catfished yourself. Well, I don't understand it because I'm not catfishing you, but you've told me that reason before. Okay, but, but when you when you ask me, uh, the, there's been some stuff that you've asked me that. Oh, oh. okay. N now, don't get offensive on this because this is just an example. Uh, when you uh, when you ask me to tell you something about me that's personal that nobody else that I've never told anybody else, the, that's what all of them have done to me. They have all wanted to know. Yes, bitch. They all wanted to know something. They all wanted exclusive Lord information, including the person you're talking to right now. What does that tell you? Lord, what does that, it's the whole fool me once, fool me once, shame on you, fool me two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Lauren, shame on you, dude, dude, shame on you. They're, they're all asking you the same shit? Oh my God. No, something personal about me that nobody else has known. Okay. So, you know, that, that, so uh, you think there's a chance I'm catfishing you then? No, no. Just, uh, why would I say that? Well, then why does that matter? Because Casey. it's just a reaction that I have. It's Casey. an automatic reaction. It was your it's... idea. You, do you remember how that conversation went? You were talking about how we know things about each other that nobody else knows. And I asked you for an example, and you couldn't give me one. I can't, I can't give examples. I hate giving exactly. examples. Exactly. You brought it up. You mentioned <laughs> it. Yeah, but when you call me on... on Want an example of something? I suck at giving examples. <laughs> I, re I really am terrible at giving examples. Because you had none. No. You should well, be able probably, to back up what you say. I probably had some, but I just couldn't think of it at the time. And I felt like I was on the spot and just couldn't gather my thoughts. How were you on the spot when you were the one who talked about it? Not expecting you got to defensive ask. on your own question. I know. I weren't prepared to, to answer your question, though. So I couldn't think of, a, of an example. Okay. I mean, point. it was your question, but all right. <clears throat> what was the question? What is something personal that I know about you that nobody else does? That was the question. Oh, I re okay, I remember now. And because I told you, that you said I did. Yeah, because I told you there's a lot of things that you know about me that nobody else knows. Right, and you couldn't name a single one. You know about my job. You know things about Everybody my job. Everybody knows about your job. It's on your registered sex offender. So, so Crispy Treat, I don't, I don't know how much, like, how new you are to Lorne, but uh, he was arrested on To Catch a Predator, uh, you know, he was at the Sting House with Chris Hansen. And he believes that this is the decoy. This is the person who was hired to play the decoy at the sting house. That's who he believes all these years later uh, is, is that he is talking to and he is, in, he is, in, they are, in or he's in love with her and wants to go out to California to, to live with her. And um, I mean, the fact, and he's been catfished by different versions, <laughs> different versions of, of Casey before. Um, so yes, no, Casey does not give a fuck. Casey is, is very mean to Lauren and treats Lauren like shit, but Lauren is gonna, Lauren's gonna allow it because Casey does have female body parts. Her profile. Nobody knows the places I go. Nobody else has gotten pictures of where I've been. But that's not, that's not something about you. That's something about my job, something about what I'm doing. It's something about, not something about you, though. Just because it's a picture of, like, a road or a tree. That's not something about you. I know. If someone's like, oh, tell me about Lauren, I wouldn't be like, oh, well, he takes pictures of trees sometimes. Know you know what I mean? I know what you're saying. It's hard for me to think of something that you don't already know because you've gone on the Internet and you've... Well, you said, so you're the one who said it. You said I knew things that no one else did. So then why did you say that if you had no, like, examples of something that I know that no one else knows? 
because I know you know things about me that nobody else does. Okay. It's just hard to hard to think of exactly what they are. Right. Well, it's true. Well, let me see. What can I tell you? See, I don't know what I what I've told them. I don't remember what I've told them. So if if I tell you something that I've told them, you'll have to tell me. Yeah, Chris Petrie. If you if you just hear it from the outside, it, it would sound like he like you would feel sorry for him. But uh, he has a a horrible personality. He's a very abusive to the 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 best the best thing that has happened has been these catfish because they've kept him from obsessing over and stalking uh, other other women in real life they've kept him occupied because he's a he's a scary man uh, if if i don't know if you know but on the last call he was talking about being still being in love with a with a woman that he knew 25 years ago that they spent 6 months hanging out they weren't even in a relationship and that's what he, that's how he says he knows true love because of that so he's very obsessive scary Um, hmm. Hmm. here's something I don't think I told anybody when I was, when I was a little kid, <laughs> we used to, we used to go and see my grandmother and grandfather all the time. And I would I would sit out on his on the front steps and I'd sing. There's there's that. Uh, tell me something you never told someone. First of all, like who would ask you that question? And it's not you're not at a sleepover in third grade, but you're the thing that you're telling this person that they've never is that you used to sing on your on your grandpa's porch. Lauren, what the fuck does that even mean? What is that? It's not like just tell me some random shit you've never you failed to mention to someone before. Like, when they're asking for, but you know what they're asking for. Then we'd also one of my cousins were there, and my and my brothers too. We'd go out in, in back of my grandparents' house in the in the in the woods, and we'd pretend like we had a meat market, and we'd take rotten wood and pretend like we were selling it. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay, here's something I've never told anybody. Um, in fourth grade, it was the first year that I lived in Cambridge and went to Cambridge Elementary School in fourth grade. And a girl named Kathy and a girl named Sharon both liked me. And my best friend was a big, tall kid. His name was Jonathan. He was really tall for his age but I'm, he was my best friend at the time well he was jealous because sharon and kathy both both liked me and we i mean so the three stories that he has never told me when they were all from when he was children one he was singing on his grandparents porch the other they had a, a fake meat market with with rotten wood i guess and, and then he's about to tell a story about getting a, a kiss on the cheek from from two different girls why why what fucking filing cabinet full of booze did he find these three stories in that he thought that casey would have any fucking interest in what he is saying right now but she wants dirt she wants something she can use you know you are being catfished lauren you have to be more interesting than this these are shitty stories you sat over in the edge of the basketball court and they both gave me a kiss on the cheek. And Jonathan was was mad about it, uh, saying that he was going to tell the teachers. So they both had to give Jonathan a kiss too. What a horrible story! There's something about me that nobody else, nobody ever knew. So the, the, he chose to tell a story where two girls were blackmailed and were forced to kiss someone else because they kissed Lauren, and that's a story you wanted to share. Lauren, do you understand how that could be a problematic memory to want to share with people? That's one of the three story other I mean first that's that's even worse than the fake meat market with the rotten wood. 
the fuck? What what was that? Um, let me see. All right, so now we're on a we're on we're on call nine. Um, when I was I, I broke my leg when I was a sophomore in high school. I don't think I ever told anybody about that. There's a hair fracture, hairline fracture. On the red I haven't heard Casey. I haven't heard Casey say. I haven't heard Casey say a word. There's not one bit of like, oh really, or like, oh that's crazy. Just, just silence. Just dumbfounded silence that this is what you're talking about. And can someone um, like Chris, there's a there's a video for um by I'm sort of kind of bored. That actually he, he did a video series and it it explains it'll it'll give you everything it's like the whole 101 201 301 course you even find out who the catfish are so you can hear some of the other people who have catfished lorne uh in the past and then and i mean it's been it's just been years and years and people always think well it's not gonna top you're not gonna top this or it's done now like lorne has to be done and then eventually some new something new comes out and it's even more ridiculous than the last one the, the one before casey was a, a robot voice or just a just a text to text to voice and, and lauren had a relationship with this thing for a very long time a british male voice like we were, we were doing it was during gym class and we were outside and jumping the long jump and when i jumped it i landed really hard on my right leg and it i uh, got a hairline fracture from the that was the first time i ever broke a bone Wow! I don't know. That's still from when I was a kid. But I'm trying to think of things that I haven't, I've never told anybody. Um, I got in a fight with Tony. I don't know if I told anybody that or not. I'm, I'm I've heard you get into fights with Tony oh, where he sorry. pushed you down or something. Yeah, he pushed me down, and then then I pushed him down. <laughs> I pushed him down when I was sitting down. And, <laughs> he is still he is still bragging he is bragging about getting into a fight with his only friend who is dead and he's laughing about it this is this is a funny memory to him but also he's thinking like he's kind of a badass hey remember my friend tony i told you about the one that's dead i pushed him down surprised him brute strength <laughs> He called me the next morning. He said, good and you. I said, good and you. <laughs> we were fine. Uh, I don't get it. It's just that way of saying we weren't mad at each other. This shit happened. We weren't mad at each other. I miss him. He was, he was an asshole, but he was, he was a good guy at the same time. What else can I tell you about me? I used to, uh, I don't know if I, I know I used to tell people that I used to go karaoke <laughs> on places we used to go to with my ducks and Jay. And we'd also go and and the, the other good thing about Casey is that Casey is not acting unaware of anything. Casey is actually like a student of Lorne. So Casey knows you know, Casey knows every everything that Lauren can say. Like, oh, I used to go carry. C Casey knows. Casey knows. Like, like Casey knew about Lauren before any of us did, because Casey was at the Casey was at the Sting House. Uh, Casey knew you weren't going to bring her any pizza. Dexter, I, you probably you probably heard it all, but all that stuff on the internet. I probably told somebody that. Um. Hard to think of things that I haven't told them already. Help me out here. How do I help you out? I don't know your memories of your life. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things. That, <laughs> so what can I help you with? I don't know. Me and Roy 
and Paul used to drink together all the time. That was before I ever went to Washington State. Then then Paul went out to Washington State and to be with his family and get back with his ex wife. And he invited me out there and I went out there. I was out there for two and a half years and most time when I was out there, I would karaoke. And, well, before I before I got my first apartment out there, I, I was living with with Paul's um, wife and kids and his uh, mother-in-law and stepfather-in-law. Wow! And they were trying to tell me places to go and that, that I could go and, and do stuff and. and there was one that was a, a dance place learning country line, country line dancing. And so I went there to try to learn country line dancing. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. I was uh, self, self something. What the hell's the word I'm looking self-conscious. for? Self-conscious. I was stupid. Self-aware, self-conscious so. when I was learning country line dance. Okay, I was like, you're the furthest thing from self-aware. Casey. Yeah, I, I didn't do very well. Yeah. I was very, I was Pick, very self-conscious. Pickles. The other day you said you rethought some things and don't want to talk until my movie's over. What did you, you rethink? What movie is Casey making? Does anyone know what the movie is? Because you... Because you were doing things that was making me uncomfortable. Like what? Like some of the questions that you would ask me, and you, and you wouldn't answer my questions. You'd ask me questions, but you wouldn't answer any of mine. And it, okay. It made, me, it made me uncomfortable. Okay, so why are we talking right now? But then, but then you started slamming me too, and all that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Couldn't understand why you're slamming me so much. Okay, well my movie's not over. I know. I know. Being patient. I want to wait for you. Did you turn your TV back up? <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like the TV is just getting progressively louder. No, no, I'm in the, in the bedroom now. I just. God, how many TVs do you have on at once? Just turn them all off. I turned the one off in the living room. I'm in the bedroom now. Well, then turn that one off. It's very rude to have the TV on. I'm sorry, I forgot it was. Even all. <laughs> okay, but so last night you said call me. What was so important? Um, you said like we needed to talk. Well, because the the live stream that you that you saw, I was, I was wondering if you were fucking with me about it. So if you like, think I'm fucking with you, remember what you're supposed to do. Uh-oh. I know, Casey. See, I don't think you're fucking with me, but there's times when when you do things that give me flashbacks of shit that they they've done. Well, then maybe we shouldn't talk until you work through those problems for yourself. Casey, no, I'm working through them. Well, it doesn't sound like you are. Well, I am. It, it's just you know, I, I wish you wouldn't do some of the things nor. I wish you wouldn't question why I have these flashbacks of, of the crap that they've done. I wish you'd understand it. Well, I'm not going to change the way I am or the things I do. Chris, Crispy Tree, he'll 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 talk to any he'll talk to any female that that pays him attention. That's kind of so they the, all the catfish have uh, have acted differently at some different level. And, and Casey is I mean as as much as I've heard so far, Casey is just mean, very much the voice of of the community as someone and it's someone who has been a part of the community. So all you has all the same questions that we do has heard all the same bullshit, all of his excuses. And he's using the same things on Casey. So Casey gets to throw it right back at him because we've all had these questions before. So it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious that that Lauren is just willing to, I mean, we, just willing to accept it though. There's, there's no niceties. Because you don't like them. You can be more understanding of why I react the way I do sometimes. That would help. 
and I can explain it to you better. You never explain it better. You just avoid answering questions by saying, oh, my catfish used to say that to me. Let's not talk until you come up here. I know. I ran away. I'm sorry. Well, don't apologize. I don't care. Well, do you really not care? Why would I care? If you don't want to, if you don't want to talk to me, I have no problem with that, because you have your own issues to deal with with your catfish PTSD. <laughs> and I have no time for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do and say the things I want to do. There's plenty of fish in the sea, and if you don't like something that I do or say, you have every right to not like it, and then go find someone who does things that you like and things that they say. I'm not going to change how I am or the way I act or how I ask questions or how I say things because it makes you uncomfortable. If they make you uncomfortable, you have every right to go away and find someone who doesn't do those things if you don't like it. This Google number is, makes me uncomfortable. Right. So what you can do about that is either deal with it, deal with the fact that that's how I'm going to talk to you, or you can go meet a woman who is comfortable right away and wants to give you her number. That's your options, but you can't get mad at me for choosing what I want to do because you have every you, you have every control of the situation. You can leave if you don't like something. Yeah, but if I leave, you run right to Alex. <laughs> That's none of your business what I do. Cause... So, so, yeah, look, I'm, I'm going to say to you because if I'm not with you, you're going to be to learn again with that FOMO dick. If if they would have told Lorne, if Lorne would have tried to back out of going to the Sting House, the perverted justice decoy would have said, you know what, Lorne, it's fine. I think Derek and Maria are gonna come hang out and we're we're gonna have some some pineapple schnapps. And Lorne would have got so fucking jealous at the prospect that Derek was going to be there and they were gonna be having alcohol and Derek was gonna have sex with with Caleb before he did, and he would have made that drive he would have made that drive out there angry. And a very different Lorne would have showed up. I almost, I mean, that would have happened because that's why Derek was created because they knew Lorne is a very jealous person. So Lorne will put up, Lorne will put up with anything because he cannot have Alex win. Alex cannot. Alex is probably wearing a fucking Izod shirt and some white boat shoes and some nice brown dockers. And Lorne hates that fucking guy. Because you're gone. If we stop talking you think i'm just gonna sit here like pining over you and no i'm gonna go date people i'm gonna go do everything that i was doing prior to us talking like you shouldn't care you shouldn't be concerned with anything i'm doing if you decided to move on i shouldn't but i do care well then that's something you have to deal with that's not my problem I, if what? you're like i want to you're like oh i don't want to talk to you anymore and I'll be like, okay, and then you can't get mad if I go on dates with another guy. It doesn't, that's not right. You can't do that. The last time wasn't right. What last, last time? time? The last time that fucking bullshit was quote unquote Jamie. You gotta be more specific, Lauren. <laughs> I'm gonna, you watch me, I'm, I'm. I'm going to make sure Will pays for the shit that he's done. Okay, so you just entirely changed the subject. I don't know what you're talking about now. Well, cause when we were talking about because the bullshit dating. With, because the bullshit with Jamie is what, what made me leave. And then with me leaving, that's when you, that's when you turned to Alex. I didn't turn to Alex because you left. Started going on a date with a guy who had an interest in me and he treats me nice so i said sure i'll go on a date with you we ended up making out that's it i mean what did you expect me to do just wait for you i'm, I'm gonna keep living my life it's not yeah. fucked up at all I wanted you to so lord now sees the the results of of he wanted to test the boundaries and test what casey would do if he put his foot down and and she went out with Alex and made out with him and created he created his own mess. And that's what he will have dreams and nightmares about making a different decision or he will constantly regret pulling that move because look, look what it created for him.
once again, there's there's another guy, someone better than Lauren, who is closer, who is not bound by by their probation uh, officers if they could send dick pics or not. You do what what you did, and just wanted you to do it sooner. And I wanted I wanted the truth about shit that was that happened. Okay, well, I did it. I want you. It's just this last week, for example, you said, you know, we're not we're not going to talk to each other until you can come up here. To, when, when that happens, I'm not going to put my life on a hold until I can go up and see you. I'm going to do things I want to do. I'm going to act the, the, the same way I always did. And then when I'm done with the movie, if I just happen to be single, I would, you know, perhaps reach out to you if I felt like it. <sighs> Wow. But I'm not, like, when you say stuff like that, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, oh, okay, and then just, like, put everything on hold until you're ready to talk to me or until I'm able to go up there. I'm gonna treat it like we're not talking anymore. (laughs) I'm gonna do whatever I want. Thing one, I want you. That's thing one. Thing two, I want us. That's thing two. I I want you to understand there's there's a lot of confusion that goes on with me because of because we have, haven't met yet, and and because of all the catfish and bullshit that I've gone through, right? And that's for you to deal with. I know, and it's it's not easy to deal with. No, I'm sure it's not, but you can't blame me because because you, you can't deal with your own problems. It's not I'm not dealing with any of that stuff. I know, I, I deal with it difficult to deal with because I want yeah, to so when you're going through your little issues and you decide you don't want to talk to me then I'm fine I'll go meet another guy I'll do okay. it well what that's what happens all right, if, I'll go if, meet another guy if we're not talking that would why wouldn't I so instead of instead of waiting for me and waiting for you to be done with the movie and waiting for me to come and see me after you're done with the movie, you just go out and meet another guy. What? Right, because we're not talking anymore. I'm not waiting for anything. You can take me for how I am in the situation for what it is, and if you don't like it, then that's fine. There's plenty of people out there to date and get to know, and it's up to you. This is your... You can meet someone in Maine if you want it. You can't meet me or like be mad at our circumstances you decided to pursue a woman who lives in california who's in the middle of a job yeah. so you can't just be like well i like you so you have to drop everything and do what i want that's not how it works it, it's just not and i'm not gonna like beg you to talk to me or i'm chasing after you if you say you don't you don't want to talk anymore because you know, I'm uncomfortable with the stuff you say, and you ask me questions that remind me of the past when I was being catfish, and I and I don't like it. I would say, okay, well, that's too bad. Um, have a good life, and um, I hope you find what you're looking for, because I'm not gonna play some some chasing game. I don't do that. I found what I'm looking for. It's just a matter of getting her here. <laughs> And like I said, I'm not, I can't just up and leave to come see you at any time I want. I know. I do know that. I just get frustrated. Well, you know, what's extremely frustrating is when you tell me to call you and then the next day you say, we shouldn't talk. He he gets, he's in the same path. Like, I mean, it's, it's constant, but... He keeps saying, you know, well, it, I'm just frustrated or it gets me frustrated. And he continues to go to that well, even though Casey's made it clear, I don't care if you're frustrated. If you're frustrated, then fuck off. If this is too much for you to handle, if this is causing you, if this is causing you more frustration than it's causing you joy, then you should just fuck off. I don't care. I'm not going to change anything about me or the way I operate. Nothing is changing. Either you accept it or fuck off. And, and Lauren's going to be like, yeah, I know, but, you know, I'm just frustrated. Again, Casey doesn't give a shit. Casey is filming 
Scream Part Nine or another scary movie, one of those um, reboots, date movie. That's what Casey's doing. Casey's not worried about the the pedophile in Maine with the yellow peeling toenails. The movie's over, and then you text me anyways. Um, it you just play game after game after game. All you do is play games. Okay, and I'm not start. playing games. One of these days you're going to do it and I'm going to be in the wrong mood and I'm just going to block you. Okay, then we're going to start talking more. We were talking fine before. Well, we're actually being more open now. <laughs> well, when I have a problem with something, with some way that you're talking about <laughs> something like that, talk to me about it instead of too, saying too bad. Well, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be your therapist. I'm not interested in doing something like that, or like. Well, but no, 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 Casey, that's a lie. That's a lie because you already are. You already are. I can tell you're a therapist. I know. Yeah. See, I, I can. Uh, is is Casey Lawrence therapist? I can tell you're a therapist. I know. Oh. Okay. A big upper. It's not being a therapist. It's therapy for me and you both. So being a parent. So that I don't need be... therapy. No. I'm not going to baby you. I didn't say anything about baby and Casey. And don't say, don't ever say anything about coddling because the way that you coddled, quote unquote, Jamie was extreme. Well, I'm not going to coddle you. So I'm not a supermodel. I'm not Jamie. But it doesn't mean that you that you can treat me like uh, like I'm something that you dug out of the water, or out of the mud, or something. Do you like just make up the sentence as you go along, or do you have the thought yeah. first before you talk? I make it up as I go along. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Uh, that makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> It doesn't mean that I want you to treat me like I'm second best. Second best for what? Good, the, 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 a supermodel. Lauren, you're not even second best. Like Casey's making very clear, you're not even there's. If there was a list, I mean, you might not even make the top 100. Casey doesn't give a shit. Casey's saying maybe, maybe if things line up when when I when I'm done with whatever I'm done with, if things line up and we happen to hook up, we'll we'll see. But Casey is putting zero. Casey is is not waiting around. Casey is going to live her life, and if if that means Casey is going to be with a bunch of dudes, Casey is going to be with a bunch of dudes. Casey is going to be with Alex P. Keaton. Casey is going to be with Alex P. Keaton. It's up to Casey. I noticed I, that, know that, I, I know. I noticed your reaction when I sent that picture of Jamie to you. I noticed your reaction right off the bat. Read off. That all of a sudden you want. That you were, were against have doing having a throuple. And I noticed your reaction right off the bat with us. Yeah, you know, and what? What about it? It was, it was crazy. She didn't react to that way to me. Look at her. Look at you and look at her. Yeah. So what about it? Well, but there's your answer. <laughs> Because she's a beautiful woman. I'm not a woman, for one thing. Well, no, she's just a beautiful person, and she was smart and nice and intelligent. Okay. How beautiful did she turn out? Like, looks-wise? Like, as a person-wise. Well, she's not real, so I don't... Okay, so... so right down to it, is beauty's only skin deep. If you don't find a person that's that's beautiful. On yeah, the- I mean, but Lauren, you under you get what you're saying though, right? Like beauty is is skin deep, but you're you're normally what you'll notice about a a person is is their looks initially. That might be what attracts you. Now they could have a shitty personality that'll push you off, but you're probably gonna notice someone who, in your mind, is conventionally attractive to you versus someone who was not conventionally attractive to you, Lauren. Right, you you get that, but so but your whole point was 
you saw a picture of Jamie Amy and you were instantly like smitten by her. Well, why not me? Bitch, look at you. That that exactly look at you. Not with the hat on though, because with the hat on you do look like Justin Timberlake and you'll get confused. Inside. Okay. But we're talking young. about first impressions. Huh? You said we're talking about first impressions. You said when yeah. you first showed me the picture of her, I did something, I guess. Yeah. The way you reacted mm. to her. Yeah. She was, she was a beautiful woman of, of a person that I thought was real for two fucking years. Two years. But your reaction was the same as mine. She was beautiful. She was Yeah, amazing. what is what's the point here? The point is you were reacting to her what her looks were. And you were treating her according to what her looks were. So well she, no, she, you she have to remember life. she was also very nice to me all the time. Yeah. But she wasn't real. Okay, so she so she was hot and she was nice to you and listened to you. So what? That's what you need now? Someone who's good looking and listens to you and treats you with respect? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, your majesty. Yeah, but she treated me nice and we would play games and we would spend time together. So what's the problem? So she was a good actress. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So do you see the difference? The difference in what? The difference is she was acting. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah. She she was pretending to be nice. I'm just being a piece of shit all on my own and putting it all out there. Okay? So, do you see the difference? Real. Okay. <laughs> just because she was beautiful didn't make her a beautiful person. No, that, you're right about that. Do you see my okay. point? Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't see what the point was. <laughs> see my point? The point, of, well, the point is she wasn't worth being having an interest in. Yeah. I regret, I regret that that we had a throuple. Right, me too. I guess I made my point. <laughs> Well, you still have a point. I don't know what the point was. Point is. Wow. He really was piecing that sentence together one step at a time there. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that you, you showed more interest in somebody that was beautiful just because of their looks than you did to me. <laughs> Well, no. You did. Did you not? Did we not just talk about this? How yeah, she was very nice to me. A, we got along right. great. We never argued. You and I argued all the time. Well, don't you find something real about that? <laughs> real about fighting? About arguing. <laughs> We're having a better communication than what you and her had, because... No, her, her and I's okay. communication was way better than what your and I's communication was. You and I could have a very good communication. The, the only reason that you had such a good communication with her is because she would agree with everything that you said. Well, and we would talk. To I mean, Lauren is trying to explain to someone how to get catfish when this man is a master of getting catfish and does it wrong each time. Lauren, you do it wrong each time. You've been catfished. Did they just agree with everything you said? No. Lauren, and he, he's trying to make Casey like feel bad and and feel like, look, you just don't understand. This is what a real relation a real relationship is a struggle. It's a lot of it is a lot of pushing. It is a lot of working. It, you know, if your relationship is constant work, it's not fucking worth it. They will be work at times, but if it is if it is constantly work, get get out of it. That's not fun. There should be some level of enjoyment in being in a relationship. And this relationship is a slog. Like he is constantly just backing up, and and Casey's just punching him, punch after punch after punch in his stomach. And you know his stomach can't take it. I, I got lazy during COVID. Each other all the time, and we would learn about each other, and we were great at communicating to each other. We would talk all the time. 
and she was always very nice and yeah she you know we were interested in the same stuff and it was easy talking to her but what was the reason behind being so easy to talk to her because our personalities aligned with each other because she was poor naive because she was fake well, yeah, she was fake. Poor stupid so Casey. Probably everything that she said to you was probably a lie. Oh, I'm sure it was. It wasn't even a she. It was, it was a, a fucking he. Yeah, I'm, yeah, none of it's real. <laughs> okay, so everything that me and you say to each other is real. Okay, but you gotta understand, I didn't, I didn't know that at the time. Well, I know. At the time, I didn't know she wasn't real. Neither one of us did. But when she, when she started, when she started acting to you the way that, mm. the way that she did, I, I knew something was off, and that's why I started backing up then. You Plus, you didn't, didn't back up then though. I did. I, I played like I, I did. I played like I did. I probably didn't <laughs> notice it. I was too wrapped up in her. I, I didn't really notice what you were doing. Ooh. I know. Her and I were. And I was so wrapped up in each other Casey. that you kind of became an afterthought. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You and I lost each other because of somebody that was fake. Yep. So. Yeah. And that sucks. See, you're going to want to blame Lauren for the things he did, but he wants you to know, Casey, that you ruined what could have been a really good thing by getting someone else involved. And you got you got this this Jamie girl involved, and look what happened. You know, like now we're just trying to get back. We're trying to get back to where we were. And now, Casey, just what a convenient way to segue into this fucking Alex guy that you're bringing around. So once again, Casey, just a reminder: the last time someone else got involved, things got kind of bad for us, and we have a good thing here. This Alex dude, I'm not liking where this is going. So please stop. and I lost each other because of somebody that was fake. Yeah. And that sucks. But the oh. I actually heard a song that um that I think Casey might have this is a song Casey should have sent to Alex um before their date just so that he would know what kind of night they were in for. It just doesn't matter what hole you get yourself into. It just doesn't matter what hole you get yourself into. You can put it in my mouth or you can boogie down on south. You can put it in my ass. We'll have to smoke a lot of grass because I know it will hurt. So let's numb the pain first. It just doesn't matter what hole you get yourself into. <laughs> You told him he could put it in any fucking hole he wants, Casey. Is that fucking cunning? Okay. Is, but the good thing is that now we have each other back. <laughs> and that's out of the air, out of the picture now. And How do we have each other back? Because last I checked, I we weren't supposed to be talking at all. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't work out so well with me and you, apparently. What do you mean? Apparently, it doesn't work out so well with, with me and you because look at us. We're talking. See, when I, when I ask you something and you just repeat what you just said, I'm asking for, like, an explanation. You just repeated it. I'm saying, what what doesn't work for us? What wasn't working? You didn't explain anything. It was, us, ta- us not talking wasn't working very well. For you? <laughs> no, no, Casey, Laura... I love when Lauren assigns emotions and feelings to people because he would do it a lot to um, to Kayla. I, I you I know you must you're you're gonna miss my penis. I know you miss you you miss it when I put it away and right and you know you want to give me a kiss right and it's uh it's it's that weird shit that he does where he wants to tell you how to feel and you just need to agree with them and he'll be happy. So yeah, look how well it works out for us us on us uh, when we don't talk, right? Because like, look, we're talking right now because we just can't fucking stay away from each other. Yes, are we toxic? Yes, but we're going to work through this and we're going to have a good relationship because we're working on communication now. Obviously, for both of us, because look at us. We don't stop talking to each other. I stopped talking to you when you said you didn't want to talk anymore. 
Lauren, you anything? Saw, but you all, you all started again. <laughs> Conversation started anyway. So regardless of how it, how it happened, it doesn't really matter. It's it, it happened, and I don't regret it. I don't regret it happening. And I don't want to stop talking to you. I don't like going well talking to you. Okay, well, we'll see how long that lasts. Oh, it'll last. Just do me a favor. And think of some things before you say them to me. I do. I think long and hard about the things I say to you. That's why I say them. Really? Mm, yeah. Lauren? <laughs> that was it. You guys heard it was like a it was like a three second and then he rebooted back to the uh, either you know the I love you so much or I wish I could be with you or I wish I could see you. Because he was he was stumped right there. He was fucking stumped. I wish I could see you right now. I wish I could send you pictures, I wish I could, I wish I could send you videos. Well, I think you can, you just don't want to because you think it's going to get you in trouble with your probation officer. Um, I can, but if I do, they say something to me because of them wanting to stop the videos from going online and all that stuff. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can do it if you wanted to. You're just afraid to do it because of your embarrassed probation is going to say something to you. But I mean, they don't, they don't, it's not illegal. You're not doing anything illegal. It doesn't matter. No, I'm not doing anything illegal, but they, they don't want me sending videos because they want, they don't want right. anything being online. Right. But you're not going to get in trouble by sending videos. No. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they might not like it. But you can still do it if you wanted to. Yeah, Ashley, Ashley would say something to me. If it wanted to yeah, she would say something to you, but she could, she wouldn't, like, throw you in jail. Or, like, write you up for that. That's not something you get in trouble for. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. I'll just say something about it. Yeah. And they're trying to help me to stop videos from being put online. They're doing a really good job. They are doing an amazing job. They won't. They won't believe that you're real until you hear. Anyway, regardless. I mean, yeah, exactly. So I don't really give a shit what they think. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know you. I know you're gonna say that it doesn't upset you, but I know it does upset you some because they don't believe you, even if, even with you giving them your your license and, and shit. Nope, doesn't upset me at all. I do not give a single fuck about Ashley. <laughs> Or the other one, or the other one. I really, I, I do not give a single gut. Casey, 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 you know you. Why would you say that? You know you care. Because if they don't believe you, Casey, we're not going to be able to be. Casey, stop. You're just saying that. You don't mean that. Damn fuck if they think I'm fake or real. Well, Casey, I wish you would give a shit because it helps. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry, I don't. I wish you because would. Because I, I really don't give a goddamn. Uh, it, it helps when you do, because it, it helps you to understand well, more. You see, it, it doesn't really matter, because I gave them what they wanted, and they still think I'm fake, so I, I don't care. Well, you know you know why that is, though. Why? Because of the ticket. Oh. Uh, that ticket didn't do any justice. Well, they didn't believe me before the ticket, so it didn't. It doesn't matter. That's you gotta look at what they what they're seeing. Well, this is this is what I'm saying. I don't I don't care about what they're seeing or what they think. Like I, I mean, I don't I don't care what their suspicions are. It doesn't bother me. Do you get a warrant? I wish it would bother you because it wasn't you that did anything. I'm like, what? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. 
I mean, even, I mean, even if they, you know, I can give them anything they want, they, they'll still tell come pay. So I, I really don't care. I wish you would care a little bit. Mm, sorry, though. I do not. I do not care. Oh, I don't think there's anything in this world I care less about than what your probation officers think of me. Well, I, I wish you would care about what they think of you about you because that would make it easier for me going out there to see you. How would that make it easier? Because if 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 you're nice to them and you give a shit about what they're what they're saying, they're gonna notice that and they're gonna feel better about me going out there. They don't they don't say anything to me. No, they don't. They they don't want they don't want they're afraid of being recorded themselves and put on the internet. Right. Especially so I don't know what they're saying, I don't know what they're saying. It, nothing I can do is gonna go a long way. It doesn't matter. But especially where they work for the government. They have to watch That's the weird. steps that they take. Well, they have to watch the steps that they take. Well, wouldn't that just be more evidence for them? No, it would be more evidence for them, but it wouldn't help me any. I mean, it, it, it would hurt the people in court when I get them in court. Right. So, I mean, what do they have to worry about? Because I mean, how would that not help you then? Wouldn't it, it be would able help, to prove that I'm fake? It would help me, but it would not help my probation officers. Well, it would help them if, if I was fake and recorded. Our probation officers. And then when I talk to them on Zoom and then put it online, that that is that is that helps both of you, right? Because then it would prove I'm fake. But it would, uh, excuse me, it wouldn't help them because of their job. They're, they're getting paid to prevent. Wait, hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on real quick. I'm sorry. I got to do this. I got to do this. Breaking news. Breaking news from Blue Boy. Uh, the ticket Lauren is talking about. I made a fake plane ticket and had him drive four hours to, <laughs> and had him drive four hours to pick Casey up from the airport at 2 a.m. <laughs> uh, Blue Boy, did you wear the panties or were the panties in the bag? Or did you guys decide on that? Uh, when did you guys decide on that? You know, before Lauren, before Lauren picked you up, drove at 2 a.m. half chubbed. To pick, to pick Casey up. <laughs> so even after the fake plane ticket, even after drive, so that was four hours round trip or four hours each way. Um, I need I need to know, please. Stuff like that from happening to me, and they let it happen to themselves. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, I didn't know that was in the job description. Yeah, well, and I mean, Sue told everyone about you going to the airport. And the ticket. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure she did. I don't even talk to her anymore. I really don't talk to Roy anymore because because of Sue. Because I know he still talks to her. So I, I try to stay away from Roy. Because the less, the less that Roy knows about me, the less he can tell Sue. Yeah, you know, maybe at some point I will go into how I was, uh, how I was, how someone tried to set me up to ruin to ruin this catfish. It was pretty fucked up. Pretty fucked up someone tried to get me to, try to use me to ruin a catfish because they were angry. That's some bullshit. Apparently Roy's talked to some other woman too that he met at the... What's up, Honest? Um, Acadia psychiatric place too. Yeah, he's picking up girls. Guys, I got more. <laughs> I love this part. I love this part of the call. I love this part of the call. So, uh, so he drove two hours, waited thirty minutes, and then drove back to Cornville. And people, I, I want to let you know, he he were bringing a pizza. Uh, Lauren brought a pizza with him. So Lauren, a pizza, a a four hour round trip, 
gonna pick Casey up. Casey probably brought some sexy lingerie, maybe a, maybe a toy. Or, they were gonna have some experimental, wild acrobatic sex because you you can't tell the look. But Lauren is an athlete, and Casey is also obviously an athlete. They would have had athletic, tantric sex that lasted for hours. And Casey would have said, "You know, what, Lauren, I'm not going home because you know what, I am home." And that's how the movie, and that's how the movie ends. But then Lauren kills her. Um, we don't have to cover that part. Uh, I can't wait to hear those voicemails, Blue Boy, because that's insane. I love this part though. At this fight hospital. Apparently, his brother is a daddy as fuck. Well, he's he's not himself anymore. That's why it's been so hard for me to deal with him. He's he's not yeah. himself. The alcohol he's he's drank so much alcohol over the years, and the stuff that he drinks now is it's called Natty Daddy, and it's literally <laughs> bottom of the barrel crap. And it's, it's he awesome. is a daddy. Casey, he's stop that. Out. Casey, stop that. He's, it's like like Paul said, he, he, he's Natty, but he's not a daddy. Oh, he's a daddy. So he's, he bitched to Paul about this. He he bitched to Paul about it, too, because Lauren has to have, just like the prison hierarchy, Lauren has to have someone beneath him that he can look to and say, God, what a piece of shit. And that person for him is Roy. Even the, So the reason why I was contacted to try and ruin this is I was, I was told that you know, I was given a story about someone going to live with Lauren, and then Lauren didn't get along with her so she ended up living with roy in the shed or something along those lines um and that lauren was jealous so like this is the this when i heard this the first time this is when i realized that i they were someone was trying to use me to to break up i didn't realize this shit was going on at the same time so it wasn't until i heard this fucking call that i realized that someone was trying to use me to ruin this catfish when it was still going on Humble is a daddy. He's picking up girls at the mental hospital. Natty daddy. That's the daddiest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, Roy's the goat. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's sad to seem like this because he doesn't. He, he used to be. I mean, he gets to live in a shack, drink beer, and fuck girls. Casey, shut up. Shut up. I'm trying to tear my brother down in your eyes, and you keep building him up. Stop it. You can't say good things about me, but you can say good things about my brother. You fall in love with Jamie. You're falling in love with my brother without even meeting him. Stop it. Girls all the time? No, he's not fucking anybody. He has two women right now. He's balling. He's just talking to them. He's not, he's yeah, right. Not, I guess okay. one of that he... The one that he made it, made it the psych hospital was an alcoholic, too, I guess. Yeah, he's going to be slapping them cheeks pretty soon. Yeah, he, she was supposed to come down one weekend, but I, I don't know. Her, her life is messed up. But she sounds like she's actually trying to straighten her life out. Boys not, but I know he's feeling her full of shit because he lies to everybody about everything now. Roy must have a two-and-a-half-foot-long penis. Sure. He's got a do an for long dream. <laughs> it's so sad. He literally used to be the hardest worker that I had ever seen in my life. Who needs to be a hard worker when you're dripping pussy all the time? No, well, he's not. He's, it sucks to see him like this. I mean, it sounds like we're always living his best life. No, he's trying to live off other people, and it's it's sad to see him like I guess. I mean, sad for you. It's, it's sad. It's sad for the whole. Sounds family. like Roy's killing it. It's especially sad for mom because it's affecting her the most. How so? Because uh, it was affecting her the most, but that's that's where he goes. He goes up to mom's garage and stays in mom's garage, except for when he's drunk now. He won't go up there drunk anymore because I kept calling the cops on him when he did. So, and I think that so Lauren couldn't think of one thing to tell Casey that that he hadn't told someone before. He couldn't think of one thing other than 
the the fake meat, the the two girls forced to kiss up on boys and singing singing like it was the grand old fucking opry on his grandpa's porch. But he can go into great detail of shit Roy is doing if he can make Roy look bad in someone's eyes. Because he know Roy has always been more charming than Lorne. And and even now, even with with all of Roy's issues, Roy can still get friends and Roy can get jobs and Roy has a woman. Uh, and, and Lauren doesn't, and that kills him because Lauren feels like he is better. I'm better than Roy in every single way. I'm less drunk than him. Uh, I'm younger than him. My eyes are bluer than his. That last time, the cop must have told him not to be up there drunk again. <laughs> we, you're getting tired of getting called for him being up there drunk. Can we get Lauren to Okay, so you're, is your mom upset that he's getting all that strange or that he's using her, her oh, garage as a love shack? She, she's upset that he's that he's not the same as the person that he used to be. She... Bitch, you are a a 50-plus-year-old pedophile who is every move is documented on the internet, and, and there's probably a picture of you at City Hall, and people talk about you everywhere around. Do you think she is more disappointed in Roy or you? Because I promise you it is you. It is you. You are the biggest disappointment. Because no one looks at their kid growing up and says one day they're gonna they're gonna get busted by Chris Hansen um, on on Dateline NBC trying to have sex with a minor. No one thinks that you are the biggest loser. He sounds better than he used to be. He's swagging out. <laughs> he yeah, sounds no, better than he used, he used to be. <laughs> Free what? Drinking booze all the time. He's like what? Almost six. And he's just flying and dong all over town. He's not getting anything. Sounds like he is. He's laying pipe right now. The, the guy that I have doing work here for me, he's best friends with Uncle Clayton, has been for years. And he, and he knows Roy really well. He told Roy, he said, he said, Roy, if you quit drinking for two months, I'll give you a trailer that, that, you can, that we'll put on your bar. And you'll have to do some fixing on it, but it'll be a trailer. It would be a, something for you to live in, other than the camper. Roy told me. And Roy was so daddy, he didn't even want that shit. He's like, fuck it. I'm going to drink booze in this trailer in my, in my little camper. I don't give a fuck. Well, that's basically what he said. Yeah. That's a baller. Yeah, and, and she seems very impressed by that, um, Lauren. I mean, maybe if you knew more about Casey, you, you would about the lifestyle that 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 Casey's into and, and Casey's alternative way of thinking and just alter, alternative lifestyle in general, just on a more cerebral cerebral um, level, Lauren, you you would know these things and not think you like gold, you like silver gold. Let's <laughs> nice move. He said, "He said, you know, I can't stop drinking for that long." Yeah. I mean, you got to think of it from his perspective. He's comfortable in the camper. He ladies come. I mean, and I know I pause again, but. So he's also talking shit about, you know, Roy and his inability not to drink. Bitch, you went back to jail because of your inability to stop drinking. So you cannot talk shit. It has been you. You you have had there are people who have done actual crimes to children who have who are, are now off doing their own thing. And you are still under the constant watch of the law because you can't figure shit out. You can't admit what you did. And and I mean, like, so you're still a danger. Like, this it's it's insane. It's fucking insane. Come to his camper to sleep with him, and he gets to be a drunk alcoholic all day long. He's living the greatest life ever. He, he doesn't get to sleep with them. They don't get get down here to see him. Well, I mean, whoever he's sleeping with, whether it be Sue, whenever Sue comes down to sleep with him, I mean, we know he has sex with her. Sue won't be um, down. Well, that's what I'm saying is she did recently, and he was in a camper. He got a woman to travel from another country yeah. to come fuck him. And you're saying that ain't sweet? Yeah. Okay, well, when you put it, it that way. Been, well, it would have been sweet if he would have... Uh, He's one you know, dope-ass motherfucker. People flying from other countries and bang him in a, in a camper. Casey, hey, that's the last thing he needs is somebody to buy him a beer. I mean, that's a great ass story. No, not a great story at all. What, what it affects your mother What's so great about a woman 
paid for a plane ticket, flew to another country, and he didn't even have to have a home. He, he's a homeless man who got a woman to fly <laughs> over and have sex with him. That's pretty kick ass. That's rock and roll. Roy's my new hero. He's a homeless man that got a woman to fly from another country. That's rock and roll. That is pretty. That is pretty rock and roll. That sounds like a like a Netflix movie with Zach Galifianakis, and he would be playing Roy, and he would be playing Lorne, and he'd be playing Sue. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should learn a thing or two from him. Uh, I don't fucking think so. <laughs> I like living. He's living where you are. The Natty Daddy's up there just banging chicks all over the place. I mean, that's a pretty drunk all that the is, time. That's a pretty badass he nickname. Barely works, probably. He can't take care of himself the way he is. Who cares? He's living a fucking James Dean lifestyle. <laughs> Kick ass. He's, he's not living any James Dean lifestyle. I can tell you that. <laughs> It's upsetting to see him like this, but he's, I can understand why you get the divorces that he got because it wasn't their fault. It was his fault, but he wants to blame everybody else for it. That sucks. Well, at least he's been married a hundred times, so good on him. He's been married twice. Twice as many times as you and I. Yeah, well, we'll cure that. Well, no, wait. We won't cure that because we'll only get married once. Oh, the desperation. The, des- the desperation. Because everything he has thrown has been just, every pitch has been hit right back in his fucking face. And and so on that one, he, he just, this it's an intentional walk now. But we'll cure that because we're going to get, Lauren, are you hearing the way this conversation is going? She is far more interested in, and what Roy's got going on than what you've got going on, you do not impress her at all. Like, her her voice lit up talking about Roy. Did you have you heard any of that with, with you? You're not getting married to this person. She's gonna come out and bang. She's gonna come out and bang Roy in the trailer, just being drunk all day long, rock and roll, listening to Journey really loud, and the Steve Perry solo stuff. I think when you're waist deep in poon, you don't really care about divorces that much. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's not waist deep in poon. He's neck he's deep. He's neck waist. deep in that mental hospital poon. Yeah, he's that, that he is. That chick has sex like crazy wild. Calling up Roy like, oh, I'm little old sitting by my little old lonesome self over here. <laughs> he's a, he, it, it, it's sad to see well, I've seen a couple of women that he's been with, and they, it's like they were so drugged up when they were with him. It releases so much dopamine in the brain, because Roy just knows how to sling it. Yeah, I, I don't see how you're trying to find something good out of that. I, I don't think she's found something. She has found many, many good things. Many good things. She has said nothing but good thing. Not not a good thing. Not a good thing. It's been nothing but... I haven't heard one negative thing come out of... The only time Casey has been positive during any of these calls has been talking about Roy being a homeless alcoholic. <laughs> Lord, your life is worse than a homeless alcoholic. That's really the takeaway from this call. In comparison to your brother, you are worse. No, good night. I love you. What's not good about it? He's stuffing fucking all over town. What's not all these girls are so freaking honey. <laughs> what? His head's on the left field. His head's buried in the lady's vagina. <laughs> he, he, he probably doesn't even know. God, he's so badass. He doesn't even know he has sex that much. Oh. That's what I'm saying. He's drunk all the time. He probably doesn't even know when he has sex. I'd rather have sex. Yeah, than that's remember. awesome. I mean, okay. you don't see how that's awesome. That makes him even more daddy. Wouldn't you rather have sex than and remember it? Well, I mean, if I was having sex as much as Roy is. 
Casey. Who cares if you forget a few times? I care. Well, I don't. Clearly, Roy doesn't. See, see, that's the issue right there. Lauren's trying to make love. Lauren wants the lights on. He wants candles, soft saxophone music. He wa- He's going to put up a four-poster bed, and there's going to be, like, lace and mesh and shit hanging down. This man wants Cinemax sex, late-night Cinemax 1990s movie sex, and Casey wants to bang. Casey wants to, to, to fuck in the truck. Casey wants to bang on the trail. Casey's not trying to make love, Lauren. That's the problem. That's the problem. You're jazz, and 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 she's just fucking, not even music, just just the sound of beds and fucking and bodies smacking. Hey, so we're almost done with this one, but I'm gonna play. Um, I want to play one more call. I want to go on to the next call, which is call number six. So, um, we're we're gonna do that. So you're trying to say we're going to have a lot of sex, but you're going to forget some of it? (laughs) I love that that is his takeaway. So you're, okay, Casey, now I get it. You weren't, you weren't, you're just saying that we're going to have a lot of sex and sometimes you're going to forget about it. I don't know why I was getting mad. For some reason, I thought you were saying that my brother was much cooler than I because he bangs a lot of women and I don't and his life is better than mine even though he's a drunk alcoholic but no the takeaway is that we're gonna have lots of lots of sex and sometimes you just won't for you just won't remember that's fine that's fine um so I'm, I'm gonna play that I need to get the next call so what I'm gonna do now is the, the, I have a video this is a, a quick little video of Jesse uh talking to Chris Hansen about a vibrator <laughs> and uh Jesse is a is a she is a supporter of Lauren and feels that Lauren and uh, believes that Lauren is getting a raw deal and Lauren is innocent and people should leave Lauren alone. And this is not a troll. These are things that, that she says and has made posts and videos about. So I'm just going to play this while I grab the other call. Please bear with me. We're going to wrap up with, uh, with call number six, but first Jesse uh, talks about a vibrator. I want to apologize to Joey, even though I did privately, but I do want to apologize to him. Um, Joey T. Cat. Yeah, because Wes and I were kind of doing like this show kind of thing and that was not appropriate. I shouldn't be saying things. It was a leaked conversation, so I thought it was private. And I was saying, oh, how would you feel since you're saying that I'm related to the Gilgo Beach murderer? How would you feel if I called you a rapist? And that wasn't right. And that's and I feel horrible, embarrassed. Um, I spoke to him about it. Um, I've apologized. Um, I keep up. Then he told me that uh, he has a girlfriend and he would appreciate if I um, stops, you know, tried to communicate with him like that. And, um, I didn't really handle that that well. Um, and that's the truth. I did send him another one up more photo. And then he told me again. And from there I stopped and I was kind of embarrassed that I did that again. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't think it's appropriate for Wes to be sending sex toys to people in the TCAP community. I don't think that's appropriate. Well, that's, first of all, there's no evidence that happened but let's go back to something that i want to discuss oh yeah there's tons of proof receipts and everything yeah hello is this thing on jesse jesse i could say the same same thing for her what are you doing are you like are you using a copier machine are you making xeroxes no what was that sound now it's on. <laughs> My sister had to use the bathroom and I had to get off. <laughs> All right, let's um let's um let's move on to call to call six. I just don't want to find his own woman or what? I don't know. I never asked him if he's dating anyone. You never asked him? If he has, like, a girlfriend, I, I don't ask him. No. Why not? Why not? I don't know. What do you <laughs> what, 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 what? 
What is this outfit? What what is this what is this outfit the Lord is wearing? What what is what is what is Lord wearing? Why why is he wearing this? You know, just like what we did during the day. You know. So so things that I like to talk to you about, you talk to him about. We don't talk about your trailer ever. Oh wait, hey, going Casey, you, Casey. Now Lauren was mad and he didn't catch that. But when Lauren said you like to talk about stuff we like to talk about, and you said we don't talk about your trailer, that is a bully comment. That is a that's a that's a dollar in the bully bowl. The fuck is wrong with you, Casey? That's that's mean. We don't we don't talk about your trailer. That would be good. Well, why would that be good? Why wouldn't? I? Well, I mean, it'd be cool if my friends can come out. Yeah, that'd be nice. But it's the same thing I told you before. Everything that um, the, that you and I should be sharing, you're sharing uh-huh. it with him. You're sharing it with him, That's not true. me. What am I sharing with him that I'm not sharing with you? What you did during the day, how your days went. We we talk about that every phone call. Yeah. Yeah, every phone call. Okay, and every phone call is when. Every day? No. So how often is every phone call? I'm not really sure. Not really sure? You just don't want to tell me. How often do you and I talk on the phone? No, how often do you and Alex talk on the phone? I answered that earlier. Hey, like hey. What's maybe once, once or twice. Ladies and gentlemen, High Morn has entered the, has entered the chat. <laughs> now, if you like trash and if you like cologne... High Morn has an amazing story about how she one time found a bottle of cologne in the trash and she wore it. It's a really, I, I mean, I guess I just told the story, but it's funnier when, uh, when she says it. Cause she sounds like this. It's me, Hi Morn, and I'm from Ireland and I talk like this. Yeah, like once or twice. Like if we're going to go do something, I call or he calls like, oh, you, you want to meet here? You want to meet at the place or, you know, go to the beach or what do you want to do? That's nice. <laughs> Go to the beach. Yeah, we're pretty close to the beach. Sounds like you're pretty close to Alex. Yeah, we're pretty close, I guess. No. Yeah. Pretty special guy to you. Yeah, he's a good friend. <laughs> no, Casey, he meant that. Yeah. Casey, he meant that sarcastically. I'm. I feel like you knew that, and you're just going with it. But he meant that sarcastically. He does not think that Alex and just. I mean, like, look at Lorne. Okay, Lorne's looking really good. Lorne's looking really good. But then look at Alex. This is going to be hard to compete with. This is going to be. I mean, Lorne, um, with the with the ceiling like that. I mean, like, what is with the hurricane damaged ceiling? And then and then here's Alex, obviously in some sort of professional studio. I mean, just that alone, just that alone, um, you know, Alex is, Alex is pulling ahead in this race. It's not even close. So why would you not take the way I feel into consideration? Why, Casey? Answer. I'm sorry? Why would you not want to take the way I feel into consideration? Like when I hang out with my friend? Like when you let him stay over your house. Why would I need to consider your feelings in that matter? Because it's not appropriate. <laughs> You know that I'd be upset about it. Well, you say it's not appropriate. I I think it's totally fine to let your friend sleep on the couch. If she was a female, sure. Well, female, male, anybody. If they're my friend, I I let my friend stay over all the time. Oh. If it's one that you made out with, no. Well, because he's the only friend that I've made out with. Well, see, that's even more a no. What's a no? So, Lauren, would you prefer if she made out with all of her male friends? Which one is it, Lauren? One male friend or all of them? Or, or just multiple? Did you want it to be more? Lauren, what is it that you want to deposit in your spank bank? Just just, just tell her. I'm sure, she'll, I'm sure she'll give it to you. No, it's not appropriate. Well, it, it's my house and my life, and I can decide for myself what I deem appropriate or inappropriate. Yeah, if he tried to like come into my room and sixty nine with me, I'd probably say that's pretty inappropriate. Wait, well, yeah, Casey, you, know. you would probably say that's an, you would probably probably say that's inappropriate, Casey. I heard what you said. Why, Lauren? If Lauren wasn't so, and this is how you know 
this is how you prove that Lorne is not having a conversation. Lorne is waiting for his turn to talk so he could say the sentence that he has loaded in his mind because as he acknowledged, he doesn't think of these things beforehand. He has to piece them together. So he already has his next sentence ready to go. It's loaded in the chamber. And and as soon as he gets his way in, he's just going to come out with that. Or he would say, wait, what do you mean? You would probably, what the fuck does that mean, Casey? You would maybe 69? Well, did you fucking 69 with him? Did you? You know, and then and then it would start that. But this man is so mad, he's not even listening. Be taken into consideration at all. Like, he shouldn't even, he shouldn't even be there. Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't he be there? Because look at him. At my house. What purpose does he have to stay look at God. your house when there's Uber on his phone? This man can afford an Uber. Because I offered for him to sleep on the couch. Okay, so you don't take my feelings into consideration when you offer for him to stay at your house. No. Because this is the guy that you made up with, that you spend a lot of time with. I didn't invite him over because we made out. I, I let him stay over because he was drunk. That's where the Uber comes in. Yeah, I already answered that earlier about the Uber. Oh, I know you. Still get the same old answer. Yeah, yeah, her answer hasn't yeah, changed. My answer changed. My life in my house. I don't care how you feel about anything. <laughs> that works well. Well, I mean, I care how you feel about some stuff. I don't. I, I've got to say, it sounds like it's working out really well for Casey because Casey doesn't give a shit. And Casey is saying, "It is my house and my rules, Lord. And if you don't like it, you can take your your black um, Walmart shorts and and Roy's old shirt." And you can fuck off, but please fix that ceiling tile first. That that looks like there are mu- mushrooms growing on top of this. There has to be mushrooms growing on top of it. Not good mushrooms either. Um, like this, how do you take a how do you take a picture in this and send it to someone? And not just to someone, but a, this woman is in a movie. This woman, as far as Lorne knows, is a celebrity. And he's like, I'm gonna take go take a picture outside, Lorne. You live in nature. Go take a picture outside, oh, pointed away from this shit with like trees in the background. Anything, anything. Uh, look at this. There might you might as well be standing in front of the toilet and it's just full of dookie because this all looks like shit. What my friend staying on my couch has to do with you? Because it's a friend that you made out with, yeah. Casey. Remember? But what does that have to do with you? It's a friend that you pay too much attention to. Mm-hmm. And what does that have to do with you? That has a lot, a lot to do with me. Yeah. Like what? Because it's something I don't like. <laughs> okay. If you don't like don't... something, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. What do you mean? You if... do things I don't like all the time. When you tell me not to do it, I'm I not don't gonna do it. Do it. Well, that's your choice not to do it. That's out of respect for you. You bitch. Oh, thank you. No. No, no. Thank me by saying bye to Alex. So out of respect for me, can you not invite him to stay over your house anymore? I don't invite him to just this. We don't have, like, slumber parties. Well, after he gets some drinks in him, apparently that's what he thinks is going to happen. I'll just get drunk and she'll invite me to stay over her house. I'll drive over her house and we can drive to the bar in her car so I can get drunk and I can stay over her house. Planted mm-hmm. in his head that it's going to be an automatic thing. I said, you planted it in his head that it's going to be an automatic thing. That if he drives oh. over your house yeah, why? And, he, and he drives to the, the cocktails or drinks mm-hmm. and drives home with you, that he's going to be able to stay over your house automatically. Yeah, I would let him stay over if he was too drunk. Oh. Yeah, instead of saying, okay, you have a phone, you need to call an Uber, you're not driving drunk. Yeah, that's right. Lauren, maybe maybe you should um, explain how Uber works again, because maybe the first couple times, Casey didn't quite know what you meant. Maybe you could mansplain Uber to Casey. Um and then, and then Casey will be like, oh, Uber. Okay. I thought you were saying something else. That, instead of saying that, you say. Yeah, yeah. You get, you say, yeah, that's what you're. You say, go ahead and sleep on my couch. Go ahead and sleep yeah. on my couch. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Regardless of how the how this guy that I'm interested in, regardless of how he feels. Yeah. Regardless of how you feel, yeah. 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 So even though he could get home safely, mm-hmm. no respect gets shown for the way I feel. No, your feelings in this aren't. Your feelings are not involved in this. In my decision to let him sleep on the couch. Yeah, because Uber drivers don't do that for a profession. Yeah, explain that. They do sleep on my couch. <laughs> they don't drive people, to drunk people home. Yeah, the Uber drivers will do that. Yeah. Yeah. So why not let him do it? Yeah. Well, he could have done it if he wanted to. Okay. I just offered him to sleep on the couch. Yeah, but why? That's the question. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he gets to see you walking around in your pajamas and see you in your home life. Do you mean my pajamas in my home life? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The guy that you made out with, that you spend a lot of time with. Okay. I mean, yeah, if I'm at home and going to bed, I, I do tend to put on pajamas. What kind of pajamas, Casey? What do they look like? Are they little shorts? I know you know what I'm saying. You do know, Casey. What about what? You're playing house with this fucking guy. But not respecting me and letting him stay over. Yeah. It's not appropriate. Mm-mm. You said you didn't find that appropriate earlier. <laughs> a few times. Yeah, I, I you know. But I guess the way I feel doesn't matter. No. Nope. I think the way you feel matters sometimes. Well, apparently not in this situation. No, not in this situation. Because he can't take an Uber home. Yeah, he can if he wanted if he wanted to. Yeah, but he'd rather stay at your house. Yeah. That's why he drove your his car to your house and drove to the bar with you so that he could get drunk and stay mm-hmm. at your house. Mm-hmm. Explain it, Casey. No, no, the bar's closer to me, so I figure we might as well just drive together. Yeah, well, okay. See what happens next time. Oh. Next time we go to the bar? Yeah. Okay. I will see what happens next time. Better be the same old thing. So, uh, yeah, if we go to this bar, probably. Yeah, probably. Up for another date of cocktails. A romantic date of cocktails. Just me and Alex. Mm <laughs> hmm. Yeah. It looks like Reborn's going to start in about a. He's premiering something in 30 minutes, 27 minutes. So I'm going to um, end after end after this, and then maybe come back later to do some uh, some some more of the more Lorne stuff. I'm enjoying myself. I can't say uh, how would you feel if the tables were turned because you just say, oh, okay. She, she doesn't give a shit, Lauren. When the tables actually, mm-hmm. when if the tables actually were turned, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't say just say I don't care. Oh no. Um, I, I think I would. Lauren. Sure. That's what everybody would say. Oh. Uh, Until that actually happens. Oh, uh, okay. So did you talk to Alex already today, with the exception of this morning when you when you both woke up? Together. No. They had breakfast. Well, I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, Next time, why don't you ask him why he doesn't try to find a girlfriend? See what he says. Well, that's rude. Why? He's your friend, right? What if he's looking for a girlfriend? I don't know. Yeah, what then? So maybe you have a girlfriend that you can set him up with. Oh, maybe. Hey, Lauren, what if she asks him if he's looking for a girlfriend and then he thinks that she's interested, right? She thinks he, that she's interested, so then he starts to pursue her. 
in like an actual romantic way and he turns on the charm lauren this dude is like because he knows her he really knows her so that book she talked about that she read once when she was a kid that really meant something to her. he's gonna go get that book and then he's gonna remember the shows that she said she wanted to watch and they're gonna watch them together and he's gonna order uber eats uber eats but not the uber to go home bitch he is going to get your girl because you're planting that seed that jealousy seed and it's going to grow fruit and you're going to be alone because casey and alex p keaton are meant to be together casey keaton maybe you should bring it up to him yeah maybe i should maybe the maybe there is a reason that he's hanging out with you so much. Maybe he's thinking that, that you might be able to hook him up with somebody. <laughs> oh, maybe. I mean, if he if he wants a girlfriend, he can he can probably find his own girlfriend. Yeah. I don't want that to be read wrong either. Yeah, look at him. Because I can understand why he'd want to hang around you. But he seems to want to hang around you too much. I don't think it's too much. I mean, once or twice a week is fine for me. Casey, your other friends have gotten neglected because... Oh, okay. okay. No. See, I think Casey and I just had it wrong. We're, we're thinking that Lorne is jealous. He's just worried. He's just worried about Casey's other friends. He doesn't want them to feel neglected. Um, because when Lorne and Casey do move in together, it's going to be very important to her, to him, that Casey keeps those prior relationships with her friends, that she be able to go out and do things with her friends. And he doesn't want to be seen as the stifling, jealous boyfriend. So that's really all it is, guys. And if you thought otherwise, shame on you. Shame on you for thinking this was about jealousy. This is Lorne being concerned about Casey's close personal friends. Oh, um, they have not. My friends are really busy. No, and fuck they you. live kind of far from me. We all have busy lives and Alex just lives the closest. Yeah, okay. And when you and I first started, you was going out and doing things with your friends or other friends a lot. Yeah, I wasn't really filming the movie back then. I kind of had the yoga thing, so I was able to see him more often. I had more like a like an easier schedule to be able to see him, you know. And they did. I did invite them to go get drinks. They they couldn't get drinks. They were all busy. I'm really interested in what he'll say as far as looking for a girlfriend. Why? Oh. Uh, I just think that it's odd that he's clung on to you like that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, Lauren, just that could have gone in so many different ways when you get set up like that with the with the catfish or troll, and they're basically asking you, "Hey, which direction do you want to take this? Choose your own adventure. Which direction do you want to take this?" Uh, Lauren is so dumb and so jealous and it's hilarious and i love that it's always some dude who comes out of nowhere who in the beginning lorne is led to believe is not a threat will not be a threat and lorne makes this person a threat just because the person gets brought up again and and they're having regular conversations how was your day they could be friends uh and and all of a sudden um lorne has competition and lorne knows i mean like she made it very clear you're you're life is worse than your drunk brothers what a shitty life you lead and, and he's a very jealous man so it's just uh it's hilarious so uh, thank you everyone for uh for joining me for this for this late day lorn uh, i might be back later tonight or this weekend either by myself or i'll have like nuggies or, or someone else join me uh, i'm gonna close out with um with a song because I feel like what's going on is Casey is running from jo- I'm sorry, from Lauren's love. And if he could put his words into song about how he felt about his emotions and, and what he wanted and what he wanted Casey to understand was in his heart, uh, I think it would go something like this. So so thank you very much. And if I don't talk to you tonight, sleep well. This is called Run From My Love. It's a song I wrote years ago. I really hope you enjoy it. Sweetheart, 
come here, come sit by me. I have something I've been wanting to tell you for oh so long a time. Don't talk, just listen. This won't take long at all. Like you knew a broken heart was the worst pain of all The love that you deny yourself from all That you won't try yourself Is it really living when you're always suffering? Well, is it, babe? It's in the rain that falls that bathes the earth with tears. Let it wash you clean and wipe away your fears. I'll be your shoulder. Every one of them. I make you laugh, I make you smile, stand by you through every trial. I'm the one who believes your heart can be saved. I really mean it, baby. Don't run from my love, stay by my side. Nothing in this world that we can't fight Don't run from my love, please be my wife Will you marry me? I want to share my world forever in my life Swear to the heavens above, baby. Be with me till the end of time. Thank you.